The rivalry between West Point and Annapolis reaches its peak at this time every year when the varsity Army-Navy football game is played. And although anticipation over the outcome isn't what it once was, today's game did prompt President Ford to forego a win button on his overcoat for one supporting Army or Navy. Haywood Hale Brune and Bob Schieffer have reports on today's activities and another different Army-Navy rivalry. Army and Navy have both had a series of losing seasons in recent years, and the big game is no longer the automatic sellout it once was. But it is still one of college football's most colorful spectacles. Navy's midshipmen were all sporting wind buttons today, the symbol of President Ford's inflation-fighting campaign. But these were wind buttons with a difference. They also said, beat Army. Mr. Ford helicoptered in from Washington and helped the referees with a coin toss that determines which team kicks off. Custom, the president spends half the game on each team's side of the field, and the president, an old Navy man himself, was on the Navy side during the first half as the midshipmen jumped to an early lead with running back Bob Jackson scoring two Navy touchdowns. The president switched to the Army side for the second half and sat with Army brass and comedian Bob Hope. Hope quipped that Mr. Ford was the first American president ever sent to Siberia a reference to the president's recent summit conference. But except for Hope's jokes, there wasn't much to cheer about on the Army side, as Army lost 19 to nothing. Mr. Ford is the first president to come to the Army-Navy game in 12 years, and he's here for several reasons. First, it's part of his campaign to open up the presidency, to make the president more visible to the people. The other reason, he likes football. Bob Schieffer, CBS News, Philadelphia. Books of tradition have a comforting look of geometric precision. And though progress may dissolve the pattern, one tradition remains constant. Army lives to beat Navy. Costumes are the same, but the cast is different. From the days when cadets Blanchard and Davis, Mr. Inside and Mr. Outside, stepped from these formations to a football field where the subjection of Navy climaxed another unbeaten season. Neither of the traditional service academies arouses much fear in the football world today, but in the week before they meet, the yeast of youth boils up and gives sparkle to the most mundane remarks. We going against you guys? Yeah. Should be good. Yeah, there you go. A little hard, uh, a little hard hitting today. <laughs> These golden knights are not preparing for the Army-Navy game, but an Army-Navy game played two weeks ago for the championship of the Eastern Intercollegiate Lightweight Football League. It's sometimes called 150-pound football, though in deference to a growing nation, it now has a 158-pound weight limit. It is still a throwback to the game of watch charm guards, scat backs, and mighty atoms of every small sort. The cadets have been champions of this low-calorie sport for the last five years under coach Eric Tipton. Do you think that your players get as worked up over their Navy game as the varsity does over its Navy game? Well, it's, it's a little bit on a uh, smaller scale, but I think the excitement and the desire to beat Navy, I think, is just as much with our team as it was with the fat team, as they call them. The fat team may loom larger, but the lightweights, proud of their speed, launch themselves like maddened Davids, yielding nothing in the zest of hitting. You get two masses coming together at 20 miles an hour. That's at, at a much uh, faster pace. You'll find out that you, the crack that you receive is a lot, uh, much, uh, much more force behind it. Against the heavier men, you get a, a solid punch. But the 150 teams are made of the little guys that sting you. So you, you get pretty well battered up just as well. Those who find that a malted fills the jowls and tips the scales may maintain that food is our fuel until the weigh-in approaches when the training table is as popular as oyster stew on a channel steamer. Those who had a malted too many go to the gym on weigh-in Thursday for a moist and vigorous penance designed to send the errors of excess shooting through the pores. Failure to make the weight is as outshutting as flunking courses or breaking a leg. Most of the cadets hardly looked at the scales, but an occasional marginal giant was sent back to lose some more toward the goal of an unmoving arrow on the balance. Running back John Mode shrank in agonized installments, while teammates, having achieved the goal, were permitted the rewards of gluttony. 
As Coach Tipton repeatedly sent him to another session of steam, his face grew longer as his weight grew insufficiently lower, until, successful at last, he barely had strength for a war cry. Hey, John. Be Navy. Yeah. Yeah. When these cadets and middies met at Annapolis, no special trains ran spectators to the stadium, and no ceremonial honors were necessary for statesmen or kings. Still, the two teams were undefeated as they took the field and had beaten the likes of Cornell, Columbia, Rutgers, and Princeton on the way to this summit of the small. To the eye, used to the nimble dinosaur pace of varsity and pro ball, these players seemed to run as springily as science fiction characters on Mars. But the game was essentially the same. The hitting is hard, the touchdowns is exhilarating, and the injuries is painful. At the end of a 28 to 12 Army triumph, the size factor was dramatized by the number needed to carry Coach Tipton off the field. This is Haywood Hale Broom. Time for us to weigh anchor. So for CBS News, Dan Rather in New York, thank you for joining us.